One team has booked their spot in the X Cup, the Chicago Blitz, advancing to X Cup 2022. And all that remains to be seen is who will their opponent be? Can Austin rebound and return to the Lone Star State to play in the X Cup, or will Atlanta Empire continue their dominance? It's game two of the playoffs coming up next. We welcome you back to the Pacific Northwest, the Showwear Center in Kent, Washington for game two of our X League playoffs. Hello and welcome inside our X League broadcast booth alongside Lane Grigg. I'm Kent McConico. Glad to have you with us in Lane. Well, it is a one versus four seed matchup. Atlanta, the one seed, they've had a spectacular year. These two teams met earlier this season. Austin, they had a late rally down in Georgia, but ultimately Atlanta came away with the big victory in that one. What does Austin need to do tonight to have the momentum and a chance to play for the X Cup? Well, there's going to be an X factor in this game tonight for Austin, who can and probably will make all the difference. Two words, Chris Daniel. The outstanding safety is used as a Buffalo nickel down in the box. She's important on offense as well, alongside Cassandra Bills. Chris Daniels is probably the best number two receiver in the X League. For Atlanta on offense, a lot of the story has revolved around their run game, primarily the second-ranked rushing attack in the league. What impresses you about this Empire run game? I know we typically highlight the skill position players, but for Atlanta, it's that front line that makes all the difference. Starting with center Kayla Weller, a fairly physical presence. Their tight ends, Jada Donaldson and April Milky, perhaps the best offensive front in the X League. And one of the players who's benefited from that front, Jessica Salazar, league MVP nominee, having an impressive year on the defensive side of the ball as well. Had the opportunity to sit down with Salazar earlier today to talk about Atlanta's run in the playoffs. We had a very successful regular season. We had two games that we dominated each game. We had great plays, great leadership. I like to think of myself as a leader as well, but at the end of the day, it's not the big plays that make the win. It's everybody working together consistently with discipline. We're here in the playoffs because we set our minds to it. The goal is to win the championship. So we're here to win a game, to get to the championship, to win the championship. It's not our goal just to arrive there and show up. We're expecting ourselves to win. We're setting goals to succeed. Jessica Salazar, one of the top players in the league and one of the main reasons why the Atlanta Empire are playing in the postseason. It's game two of the X League. The playoffs coming up next. We welcome you to Kent, Washington, and the Excesso Showwear Center. Semi-final number two, Austin in Atlanta. Michelle Angel, the signal caller for the sound. Third-ranked quarterback in the league, a league-high nine touchdown passes. Led the league with 322 yards in her two regular season games. And you consider she barely played in the second half against Los Angeles, a very potent force. And she's gonna have to have a big game against the one seed Atlanta if Austin is going to advance to the X Cup. Absolutely, she is the lead leaguer, league leader in passing yards and touchdowns with nine. And she's going to have to build on those stats if they hope to beat Atlanta this year. California native out of Laguna Hills, 5'9", 140 pounds, has made Texas her home, and they are thrilled to have her. Yo! We are underway, Atlanta and Austin. Austin with a handoff, and they will struggle to get back to the line of scrimmage. There is that Atlanta defense. But first, let's take a look at the Austin offense. Michelle Angel, quarterback. Rachel Washington, running back. Cassandra Bills, wide receiver. See some of the stars for the Austin offense. Cassandra Bills notably amongst those, but it is Rachel Washington, the Energizer Bunny, the spark plug of this sound team who is down after the first play, the league's third ranked wide receiver. And that would be a huge loss if she's unable to continue. It would, kid. And the first time that Austin met Atlanta earlier in the season, Austin was dealing with injuries. Talked to Coach O earlier this week, said that they were healthy. And this would be a devastating start to the game for the Austin Sound. We'll keep an eye on Rachel Washington. But first, a break. Scoreless early on between the Sound and the Empire in semi number two. 
Welcome back. Rachel Washington on the sideline being attended to by the sound training staff. We'll keep an eye on number 21 and see if she is able to continue. Here is what happened. The first play from scrimmage of the game. Washington took a shot. Didn't look like anything out of the ordinary, but sometimes those are the worst ones. Sunday, Sunday. Brings up Set. second and 10 for Austin. Early stages here in the second semifinal. Angel. Tucks it to run across the 20, up across midfield. Enough for the first down and into Empire territory. And you can see why many consider Michelle Angel to be the best women's quarterback in the world. The throw's not there. She sees a cavernous hole in front of her and runs straight downfield for 15 yards. Protects her body, giving herself up against the wall. Coach O has talked about Michelle Angel and how she just Sunday, continues Sunday. to get better, has grown into her leadership Set. role, and you see her Go. high football IQ displayed there. A new set of downs. Angel steps up. Plenty of time, takes to the air. This is caught. And backtracking, we'll see where they mark her. The first reception for Austin. Cassandra Bills there with the catch. And again, it's a slow developing play for the Austin Sound. Scanning, scanning, scanning. Sees Cassandra Bills out. Really, that ball's thrown a little low. Really, not many moves that Cassandra Bills can put on after catching that. Kind of that ball kind of makes you slow down, and really, you can't do much with that. But if anybody's going to catch it, it's going to be the league's leading receiver. Bills still able Sunday, to come Sunday. up with it for a three-yard gain. Set. Go. Running back in the backfield, Angel. Has her target again complete for the first down. Still on her feet, trying to get extra yards after contact. And all the way down into the red zone. Bills again. This is a great run thing by Angel. Clearing that safety out of the way. And that ball is put right on the body of Cassandra Bills. That's two passes between Angel and Bills. Looks like she's going to go back to her number one receiver early and often today. They call her cash money, and there's a reason why. If the ball is in the vicinity of number three, chances Monday, are Monday. she is coming Monday, up with Monday. it. First and goal no. from the seven. Austin jumping off sides. And Whitney Palmer, the star linebacker, will back Austin up as we take a look at the Empire defense. America Valdez, DN. Jessica Salazar, linebacker. Callie Stanley, strong safety. Salazar leading the way. America Valdez, EZ Green, a rookie defensive end pair for Atlanta. As Angel rolls out, goes across the grain, and this is intercepted. Here comes Atlanta the other way. Salazar to the 10 5, a touchdown empire. And that is what Jessica Salazar can do, ladies and gentlemen. The Miami native takes it to the house and puts the Empire on top. Empire. And this is an ill-advised throw from a veteran quarterback running across the grain, off balance, lobbing up a wounded duck across the field. And Salazar is there, the recipient of that gift for Michelle Angel, takes that all the way to the house. Again, you just got to throw that ball away. I mean, at the very least, that ball is going to get intercepted. But well done by Salazar. Right place, right time. Good hustle. And puts Chicago, excuse me, puts Atlanta up early. I know, I they do early. indeed. Atlanta looking for the extras, and they have him. The quarterback keeper from Bailey Hodgins. And the youngster is across. Seven to nothing. Atlanta on top three minutes in. A dream start for the Empire. And there you go, it's big in this game. It moves so fast and they're so high scoring. There's the lead leaguer right there. 22 rushes, 125 yards, touchdowns galore on offense and on defense. She is one of the best. MVP candidate leads that second ranked defense. They're giving up just 34 points on the year. And Salazar leading by example. Now, what does Austin have in store in their Sunday, second Sunday. drive? After giving up the pick Set. six to Salazar, Angel will have to quickly forget that previous throw. Angel complete across midfield, inside the 15 and down inside the 10. 
exactly what Austin needed. Misty Gonzalez, the veteran tight end, with a huge grab. And there you go, you got to shake it off, you got to get back in there and you got to compete. And you know Michelle Angel's going to do just that, getting the ball to Misty Gonzalez, picks up a good block, almost down to the end zone, but down to the 10, and Austin is in business. First and goal from the 10. Sunday, Sunday! Set. Angel out of the shotgun, trip receivers to the bottom. Angel. Backing up, throws off her back foot. No one in the vicinity. It will bring up second and goal. And we are being told that Austin's Rachel Washington, their running back who went down on the first play of the game, has now been ruled out with an ankle injury. So Austin will be without the services of Washington for this goal. And the injury bug strikes again, unfortunately, for the Austin Sound. Hopefully Cassandra Bills can stay healthy. Hopefully Chris Daniels can also stay healthy because losing Rachel Washington, that's a big loss on both sides of the ball. Austin, they will have to have some of those players you mentioned step up into her spot. Angel throws this one into the turf and it brings up third and goal. Atlanta's defense doing a great job. Austin unable to get any receivers yeah, free. The line right there? Talking happening? to Coach Robinson on Tuesday this week, he described Austin Sound as shooting the three ball and the Atlanta offense is grinding it out in the paint. You can certainly see that philosophy early in this game from Coach Olvera. Pass, 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 and more pass shooting for that three ball. It works if you convert, but if you don't, it makes it tough on you. Five minutes remaining in the first quarter. Atlanta on top, seven to nothing. The pick six from Salazar. Pressure, Angels knocked down, and this throw out of bounds, fourth and goal for the sound. And it looks right here that Michelle Angel expecting the wide receiver to look a little bit earlier and she never actually turns around. And that leads to a disruption in the timing of the play. And I think that Michelle Angel got up and had a heated exchange right there after that play. Just out of sync right now is Austin. It's Callie Stanley in on the quarterback pressure from her safety position. Fourth down for the sound. Can Go. they find the equalizer? Angel, pressure comes. Again, throwing off the back foot. Incomplete, a turnover on downs. Austin had it first in goal, and Atlanta stands strong. And Atlanta now with a chance to extend their early advantage. And the word that comes to mind is it's just discombobulated. It doesn't look like Everything's in sync. It looks like there's been a bit of a long layoff for Austin, and indeed there has been, and that's showing just that that lack of, of Christmas, Christmas that comes when you've played a little more recently. But they're going to have to get that ironed out in a hurry if they're going to stay in this ball game. Way to go, Keon. Same old shit. There is Dane Robinson, the veteran coach, nine years as a head coach. He has not won a championship. Could this be the year? Atlanta on the way, and a massive blow leveled by the running back, Salazar. And Salazar is playing with something in her. It is, I don't know what kind of fire she has burning, but she has come out to play. I tell you what kind of fire is burning. She wants to make her name as the league MVP. And right now, she's well on her way to doing that with this early performance, and here's another one. And they will continue with number 39. And Salazar across midfield as we take a look at the Empire offense. Bailey Hodgins, quarterback. Lindsey Bell, your wide receiver. Jolia Fezakai, your tight end. Julia Fezakai, all six foot one of her, is a great target. They keep it on the ground this time. Lauren Ziegler, the veteran, the future Hall of Famer, gets her first touch. You can see what Atlanta wants to do. They will predominantly keep it on the ground. They like that pounding run game. They are going to dare Austin to stop them. Again, they keep it on the ground. Austin doing a much better job there. Austin's defense bowing their neck as we take a look at the sound on defense. Yedid Lopez, defensive end. Whitney Palmer, linebacker. Ana Garza, strong safety. Whitney Palmer, she is the muscle, number 71, the middle linebacker. 
Coach says she is a middle linebacker from hell. She's going to have to have a big game against this Atlanta rushing attack. Third and four, little inside handoff to Nita Francis. Francis, enough for the first down, down to the five-yard line. And we saw this the first time these two teams met, that Atlanta kind of had their way in the running game. The Austin defensive ends were really not doing a very good job of keeping contained, and you can see it here. There you go, defensive end right there gets hooked. That's Shadith Lopez out of position, and a good pickup for the Atlanta Empire. First and goal for the Empire from the 10. This ground and pound, making yards and taking the time off the clock. Two backs there, Salazar again, picks her way through across the five and down to the three. And that's an old school formation right there. That's called the Maryland Eye, the quarterback with three running backs behind. And you can do a lot of things out of that. That formation really hurt Austin the first time around. And I had a pretty strong idea that Coach Robinson was going to throw that in there and see what adjustments Austin defensive coordinator Mercantile would make of that Maryland Eye. And right now, they really haven't made the adjustments they need to because they keep grinding out the yards in that formation. Salazar again takes the handoff and she is met at the line of scrimmage. Austin doing a much better job. That time, Ali Fan leading the way. And there's the difference. When you have that player on the end of the line of scrimmage, keep contained and keep that ball from hitting the edge with any kind of speed, good things are gonna happen in the run game and we need to see a lot more of that from Austin tonight. Third and goal from the five is the 19-year-old rookie, Bailey Hodgins, out of Sequoia High School there in Georgia. A star flag football player, their varsity program. Question was, how would she adjust to tackle? And she has been just fine as no flag comes in. Trying to find Julia Fazekai, but well defended by the sound, and it'll bring up fourth down. Absolutely, and a great red zone target is a Fazekai. She's over six feet tall, and this ball is a bit underthrown. I think if you throw that up high, let a Fazekai climb the ladder, she's going to be the odds on favorite to win that matchup. But as we stated, that ball from Hodgins was low. Hodgins trying to get the snap off before. And it appears that she did not as the quarter will come to a close. Atlanta on top, seven to nothing, and looking to add to that. It'll be fourth and goal from the five for the Empire when we return for quarter number two. Welcome back. Quarter number two, semifinal number two, Atlanta on top of Austin, seven to nothing. There is the team that the winner will face, the Chicago Blitz. They are headed to the X Cup September the 10th down in Austin, Texas. And what a victory they had, 34 to 33. They were able to get by Seattle, their second victory over the Thunder this year. Fans enjoying themselves, as you would imagine. Hope you are as well. Glad to have you with us, wherever you may be joining us from on Fan Pass. And Lane, that first game had everything we anticipated, everything we could have hoped for. In the second game, we can only hope that it lives up to the billing set by semi number one. Let's hope so. Every time Chicago and Seattle get together, it's special. Let's hope for the same thing here with Austin and Atlanta. Fourth and goal for Hodgins in Atlanta from the five. Hodgins takes to the air, incomplete again, looking for a Fazekai, and again, very well defended by Ali Fan. Very well defended by Ali Fan, and what helped her out a lot was there was immediate pressure on Bailey Hodgins. Check it out on the replay. Two unblocked players coming right up the middle, and that's a big ask for any quarterback to make a play under those circumstances. When you and I spoke with Coach Olvera earlier this week, he said Fan did not have a good game in that first game against Atlanta down in week four. He said she needs to show up in this one, and so far she has done that. So credit to number 11 for the sound. There is Coach O, the Lone Star State native, his side down early but still plenty of time remaining. 9.57 left in the half, Atlanta with an early seven to nothing lead. 
Coach Mike Olvera, head coach of the Austin Sound. He and Coach Zane Robinson of Atlanta, they know each other very well. They are friendly rivals. There's mutual respect between the two. Both speak highly Sunday, of each other. Sunday, Sunday, but Sunday. They know each other and they know Sunday. the tendencies of the other. Both spoke to us this week and they said, look, we, we think we know what they're going to do and we think we know how we're going to stop it. Doing that, it's an entirely different thing. Yeah. Absolutely. I think it's uh, pretty clear for both of these coaches. It's hard for a Tiger to change their stripes, and they did speak extensively how they both felt they knew how each other was going to attack the game, and that's just part of the chess match, especially the difficulty of beating a good team twice and playing a good team twice adds a little bit more to the Sunday, challenge Sunday. in the rivalry. That first yeah. game and down at the Gas South yeah. Arena in Georgia. Atlanta came away with a 50 to 34 victory. Is this one almost a Fazekai almost had that one. Julia Fazekai thought for sure she was able to get her hands on it, but wasn't the case. No interception, and that's actually a little bit of an RPO look. But not only was a Fazekai there in coverage, you have the safety sitting right there too. I think they were probably hoping that safety was going to bite on the run fake and make that post wide open, but it was not there. So far, we've seen Michelle Angel a lot of throws off her back foot, and that is credit to the pressure that Atlanta is providing. Third and seven. Steps up in the pocket, off the fingertips of the receiver. Misty Gonzalez unable to bring it in, and another fourth down coming for Austin. And right there, I think that's one that Misty Gonzalez has got to come down with in this situation. In fact, any situation, that ball's thrown right there on the money. you got to come down with that and convert for your team. You're down 7-0. you got a trip to the X Cup on the line. I'm sure she would like to have that opportunity back. Big fourth down. Angel heels almost on the goal line. And they will punt it away. Austin, maybe the wise decision, a great punt here. No, this one is going to bounce out much further than we anticipated. And it's actually going to be great starting field position. And you see the response from Dane Robinson, head coach of Atlanta. That's as good as a turnover right there. So that happened is we're hearing that that ball actually hit the scoreboard and came back down. And the scoreboard, that is in play. And so that is just a tough break for the Austin Sound and a great break for the Atlanta Empire. Is this offense energy spectacular? It's like you've been coached or prepared or something. Good job. Dana Robinson saying I did. I've done our job. The coaching staff, we prepared you, and they indeed have for what we see. And again, the Maryland Eye again with Salazar down to the 10. And that power run game, Atlanta daring Austin to stop it, and they have not been able to thus far. And the problem with this Maryland eye is when you run three people up the middle, you create a lot of extra gaps. And it's up to the defense to decide how they're going to move players to get into those gaps. And right now, Austin hadn't figured that part out yet. Seven rushes for 34 yards for Atlanta. To the air they go, complete. Touchdown, Empire. Kayla Weller with her first touchdown of the night. And we highlighted that front line of Atlanta in the opening. And we mentioned specifically the center, Kayla Weller. She does a lot of the dirty work. It's good that they call her number and let her get in the box score. And nothing better for a lineman than to catch a touchdown pass. Weller, the former professional beach volleyball player out of Marietta, Georgia, well rewarded and Atlanta is in for the conversion as well. All power from the Empire Hodgins with the keeper and it's 14 to nothing Atlanta on top. And this game is starting off like that last one was between Austin and Atlanta and it is a heavy, heavy dose of the Atlanta run and then a play action pass out of that Maryland eye package Austin had no answer for it in their first meeting. So far, they don't have an answer for it in their second meeting. And they better get it figured out, or this one's going to get out of hand early. They call her the future. Bailey Hodgins, just 19 years old, out of Canton, Georgia. Again, Sequoia High School. The second-ranked flag football program in the country. 
and she is taking it at tackle like a duck to water. A wide open, enough for the first down. Angel wisely scrambling and able to find Anna Garza. And you got this option when you're playing Michelle Angel. Is Coach Robinson, is he gonna blitz? Is he gonna spy like he did in this situation? Well, if you're not gonna blitz and you're not gonna get pressure, you better hope your D-backs are rock solid because if she has time, Angel's gonna find the receiver. First and 10 from the 42. Again to the air goes Angel. Has a receiver, touchdown Austin. That is the response, the sound needed. Chris Daniels puts Austin on the board. So far, two highlighted players from the opening featuring big in this game early on. That's Chris Daniels. So I said it, you either cover it or you blitz it. Well, when you blitz it, you leave everyone out there one-on-one. -on -one. And I'm afraid that Nina Francis probably isn't going to be able to match up one-on-one -on -one with, Chris, with Chris Daniels. She's an outstanding talent at wide receiver, and that's a big ask for any defensive back in the league. Austin going for two. It's off, Missy. Can you cut this to a six-point game? Pressure coming. Angel wide open, finds her target again. Daniels there. She leads the league in interceptions. She can do it on both sides of the ball. And that is exactly what the sound needed. And I think coming into this game, I don't think there was really any big question about the Austin Sound offense, but the fact of the matter is they've got statistically the worst defense in the league, and they're going to have to get to a point you can't just keep trading scores and hoping you can go score for score with Atlanta. You're going to have to get a stop. The defense third in the league behind Seattle and Chicago. Mentioned Angel. Her stats, league high nine touchdowns, league high in yards thrown as well. They're without Rachel Washington, one of their top wide receivers. She went out injured earlier with the ankle injury, not to return. And you said it, Austin's defense is gonna have to step up. Flag comes in late here. And we'll have to see what the penalty is. Our officials in the midst. And that's just everybody going into the ball on that play. That's the hazard of being an X League referee. <laughs> Bodies are coming fast. It's tight quarters there on that field. You got to have your head on a swivel when you're wearing the black and white. During the run, holding Atlanta number seven. That's a 10 yard penalty. Holding against Austin, or excuse me, against Atlanta. Apologies there. And there you can clear to see Lauren Ziegler with the hold there on the edge. And the difference is on that play, as soon as that ball was snapped, that safety, she read her keys and she filled very, very quickly and didn't allow that ball to get around the corner. And that's the difference, and that's what it's going to take in order for Austin to slow down this vaunted Chicago rushing attack. But now first and 10 becomes first and 20. A little pitch underneath a Fazakai. Another flag comes in as she gets up near the 15. They will mark her at the 14, but again, another penalty flag came in from behind the play. You wonder if that is gonna be holding again against the Empire, and that would back them even further. After a great start, not doing themselves any favors in this drive. Shooting themselves in the foot here. That's a good move by a Fazekai actually avoiding that first tackle from the Austin Sound. Looks like they may be backing them up again. That's the there's our referee for our contest tonight. Atlanta. Not against the Empire, they will take the mass offside against Austin. And that'll make it first and 15. Hodgins steps up to throw, hit after she releases it and too far in front of Lindsey Ezel. And three players got in there really quick, including the linebacker from hell, Whitney Palmer, right there blowing that center up. 
That's a hard pass to make, and that actually was a really good throw by ha Bailey Hodgins under the conditions. Pretty impressive with that much heat on you to get the ball that accurate. And I actually thought, I was wondering if they were going to throw this. That defender took a couple more steps after the release of that ball and caught Bailey Hodgins pretty good. And they do try to protect the quarterbacks, and rightfully so in football. They're in a pretty vulnerable position. And I was wondering if they were going to throw that flag, and they did, in fact. You're going to see it right here. The ball's going to get away. Watch a couple extra steps. And they're going to call that 10, 10 times out of 10. That's an easy one for the referee. Going against Yadith Lopez, the defensive end from Sinaloa, Mexico. Austin with the big penalty, giving Atlanta a first down. And they snap over the head of Hodgins, able to pick it up on the bounce. Tries to run this one, and Hodgins wisely just throws it away. Good heads up play from the young QB. You said it, that is an excellent heads up play. There is no intentional grounding. If you get in trouble, get rid of that ball and don't take the huge loss. This is looking at a 10 to 15 yard loss. Good job getting rid of that ball right at the end. 23, 23. Hey y'all, relax, we're good. Second and 10, Hodgins gained the respect of her teammates even though she's just 19 and they know what she can do. That uncanny resemblance to another signal caller in Atlanta by the name of Dakota Hughes. Maybe even better than Hughes was at this stage of her career. Hodgins takes off to run up across midfield. Able to get a positive gain when the pressure came. This is two really heady plays back to back from the 19 year old. The first one, the previous play, getting rid of the ball this time. The wide receiver's covered, so tuck it down and run. Don't make a bad decision, don't make a turnover. Get what you can out of it, and she did. Two really veteran plays from a young quarterback showing her maturation that she's achieved through the year. Having a chat there with Dominique Robinson, her quarterback coach and the offensive coordinator, first year as the OC. And you see the gold crowns on the back of the helmets there. Is Mitch Robinson comes out. Well, those are awarded for big plays. You know about helmet stickers at every level. We haven't seen a lot of them in X League. Atlanta has changed that, and Coach Jane Robinson said, you would be absolutely astounded by how badly the players want those gold crown stickers. You know, and, and it's really simple. There isn't anyone alive that doesn't like some sort of little attaboy or some sort of little recognition, no matter how minute, just something that says, hey, you know, you caught my eye. I know you did a really good thing. And you get a helmet sticker, and it instantly becomes a contest as to who can get the most gold crowns or skulls or Buckeyes or whatever the case may be on the back of your helmet. The players love that. And I, it sounds kind of silly and sounds kind of elementary school. But I tell you what, you start giving out helmet awards, and you can watch the level and the effort of your team improve. And it looks like. They're looking at Bailey Hodgins there on the sideline, doesn't it? They are indeed, and right you are. Hodgins coming back out in a hitch in her gate. They've taped her right ankle. You look at that. They've spatted her right ankle. Need to keep an eye on Hodgins, particularly that right ankle, now heavily taped for number two and not nearly as mobile, but has a wide open target of Fazekai. Would have walked in untouched. This one bounces off the hands of number 15. Yeah, that's that's a pretty bad drop right there from a phase of Kai. She'd be the first to tell you that it was. That pass is right where it needs to be. Over the shoulder catch. Maybe a little more difficult than your run of the mill, but that's one that you expect any player on the professional level to come down with. Missed opportunity right there for number 15. Fazekai, the former Division I basketball player, Jacksonville State University. Hodgins underneath has Salazar. Salazar able to pick up an extra yard. And they're going to say this one came out. Chris Daniels with it for Austin. And we'll see if we can get another look. Somehow that ball came out. It appeared that Salazar was down. Not the case in the ball hot. Chris Daniels doing it on both sides. Here we go, let's see what we got. There it is, there's the ball, and boy, I think she's down. If she doesn't, I'm not real sure what they're doing here. Yeah, 
That ball did not come out. It didn't out. even come out. Well, obvious confusion, Austin with it. Dane Robinson is livid and for good reason. Austin is gonna take this first play in. Atlanta still shell-shocked by what transpired or possibly what didn't as Daniels takes this in for her second and that is a huge turn. There was no fumble on the previous play and we'll see if we can get some clarification. So the touchdown will stand. Daniels wide open. Atlanta still thinking about the previous play. And here is Daniels, no one there. And her second touchdown of the night. The, clo the closest player in the vicinity, number 44, Nina Francis. And she looks like she didn't even know that Chris Daniels was out there, wide receiver. There was no one even near her. Austin looking to take the lead for the first time tonight, and they will indeed. Good on the two-point conversion, and the sounder on top, Cassandra Bills makes it 16-14 Austin. But again, a huge sequence momentum-wise in this game. What a turn of events, a phantom fumble, I'll call it that. Phantom fumble, shell-shocked defense, touchdown, two-point conversion, and just when it looked like everything was going the way of the Atlanta Empire, here we go. Austin, they not only tie it, they take the lead. And give full credit to the sound. They wasted no time. Exactly. They were ready to go. They took advantage of the confusion. They took advantage of the situation. They got that play in and they ran it off quickly. And now they have the lead. Back to Hodgins, another bobbled snap will fall on it. No, can't get there. Ball in the end zone. Is Austin on it? They are. Touchdown, Austin, Whitney Palmer, the linebacker from hell, and all of a sudden, Austin has come alive. What a few minutes for the sound, and Atlanta is going to have to regroup quickly. Oh my word, I'm not really even sure what to say about what I've seen so far in the last few seconds. It's another bad snap from the Atlanta Empire. You've got a hobbled quarterback that can't get back there to recover it, and Whitney Palmer, who's almost unstoppable and a relentless desire, gets there. And just a few seconds ago, Austin's down. Not only were they down, now they're up. They were up by two. Now they've scored again, and it's in the blink of an eye. Dane Robinson is going to have to settle his team. Okay. There's still 219 remaining in the half. Austin going for two after the fumble, recovered in the end zone by Whitney Palmer. Two minutes remaining. We'll take our two minute warning break here at the end of half number one. Austin on top. And a two point conversion coming for the sound. remaining in the half. Austin is stormed back to take the lead. A fumble and then a bobbled snap recovered in the end zone and Austin a chance to make it a two score game. And you and I were talking during the break. Coach Robinson, he has a challenge. He didn't throw it at that fumble and we're not quite sure why. No, I'm not sure either. That's definitely one that, that I would have looked at and I would have wanted to see. I, I still don't understand fully what happened on that play. And that's going to be a false start on the center of the defensive line, stemming the front right there. Austin will have to back up five yards on this two-point conversion. Does not appear that that bothers Michelle Angel too much. Maybe giving her a little more room to operate. Austin a chance to go up double digits. Receiver in motion. Angel pressure coming, throws this one to a wide open Cassandra Bills. Atlanta loses containment and Bills makes them pay. They do indeed lose containment and you have all sorts of crossing action there on these pass routes, really Atlanta just kind of confused at what they're seeing in front of them right now in the passing game, because there's one and there's two receivers that are wide open and Michelle Angel can take her pick. 
Austin, all of a sudden, they were down. And they are now up by 10 in seemingly the blink of an eye. Still two minutes remaining in the half. And Atlanta, they need to find points before they go into the halftime lockers. It was like Austin was asleep, and then all of a sudden, the alarm bell came off. <laughs> Two touchdowns from Daniels. Palmer falling on the bobbled snap. And we'll see if Atlanta can settle things down as they get back to the ground and pound game that the Empire knows so well. And that's exactly what you do whenever things get a little rocky. Let's go back and let's dance with who brung you. Let's not get away for who you are. And let's face it, we know what Atlanta is. They're a ground and pound running game, especially when you got a hobbled quarterback, you got to get that ball in other people's hands. Getting back in the Maryland eye, handoff to Salazar. Salazar pushed out of bounds, shy of midfield, and Austin doing a much better job handling that power run game. And even that first play where Atlanta was able to pick up six yards, they still did a pretty good job fundamentally playing that defense. And this is even better right here. That's a fantastic job on a fight out drill from the defensive end getting working all the way out to the sideline and stopping that running back. There is the tape on the ankle of Bailey Hodgins. She is certainly not nearly as mobile as she was earlier in the game. And again, they go to Salazar, who picks up yards after contact and able to bring this one down inside the 15. And what is the recipe for success when your quarterback's hobbled? It's a fantastic running game, and it doesn't get any better than Atlanta, and it doesn't get any better than number 39, Jessica Salazar. Every time she gets the ball, she is falling forward four, five, six, 10 yards, whatever the case may be. She is truly an MVP candidate. Under a minute remaining in the first half. It'll be first and 10 from the 13. Trying to switch things up, hand off to Ezel, who brings it down to the 10. You see Hodgins trying to shake off that ankle injury. Already have one player out with an ankle injury as Rachel Washington for Austin injured her ankle onto the first play of the game but has not been able to return. And it's gonna be very important to keep that ankle mobile during halftime. It'll stay warm while you're running around but anyone out there that's ever turned their ankle during an athletic event, once you stop moving on it, it gets tough. Hodgins to a Fazakai touchdown, Empire. And what a response from Atlanta with eight seconds remaining in the half. They march down the field, run, 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 pass for the touchdown. And a bum wheel isn't going to stop Bailey Hodgins, and a drop touchdown isn't going to stop Julia Fazakai. The connection's right back there. It works again. Great pass, great catch, putting that drop behind her, and it is a touchdown for the Atlanta Empire. Hodgins can make this a two point game. Back and forth affair. This is certainly what we hoped we would see in the hard count, drawing Austin offside. We mentioned the IQ of the 19-year-old. Just so impressive to watch her work. You could hear her in the huddle. She said quite clearly they were going on two. They did a good job holding their water, staying put, and drew that Austin defense offsides. Going for two as they get even closer to the goal line. It's been a quarterback sneak before in this formation. Let's see if they do it again. She's been following Donaldson and Weller, and she will yet again. The offensive line powers through. And successful on the two-point conversion, and we've got a two-point ball game. Austin's lead cut to two, 24-22, the sound on top with eight seconds remaining in the half. And highlighting that offensive front in beginning and give them a shout out again. They're doing a great job plowing the way. You see a quarterback sneak, and I like the little wrinkle they added in with big Jessica Salazar pushing that pile from behind. That's pretty much an unstoppable force for the Atlanta Empire. Certainly have to keep an eye on the right ankle of Bailey Hodgins, as you mentioned, particularly as we go to half number two. Austin bringing Yadith Lopez to the training room. They will 
check out their star defensive end. Still time for Angel, steps up to run. Angel across midfield, down across the 20, 15, and slides down. Is there time on the clock? There is, and Austin will have at least one more play. What a heads-up scramble from Michelle Angel. You took the words right out of my mouth. We've seen two quarterbacks that are playing at an unreal level right here. And what I mean by an unreal level is the amount of football IQ they're showing. Yeah, she can keep going, Michelle Angel, and get another five yards, but she knows exactly how much time is left on that clock. So what does she do? She hits the deck, gives up her body, immediately calls a timeout, hey, yeah, no, and now yeah, they on, get on, one on, come more come play and a shot to build on the lead. What Again, the X Cup will be on Austin's home field September the 10th there at the HEB Center. Chicago, they have already booked their spot. The Blitz headed to the Lone Star State. Will it be Austin to join them on their home field or Atlanta making the trip? Oh, it was not over eight seconds. So you give me, we're gonna, we're gonna review it. I'll, I'll get a tick or two yeah, tops. It, potentially, yeah. I'm just telling you what's going on. But okay. either way, Come here. Come Viewing on. of the Come game on. clock to see exactly Come how on. much time remains. This is critical. And I think from what I was looking, I was looking when she slid, and I was looking at the clock, and I thought she hit the deck in two seconds and got the timeout called. So I expect they were going to be able to get another play in here. Of course, I also didn't think that was a fumble, so I'm not really exactly sure what's going to happen. We will see. To the corner, you're going to snap the challenge. Ball. You're going to go if to the corner of Michelle the Angel was indeed able to get the timeout in time. Our official review from Jeff Sidoris and our X League officiating crew. I agree with you, and it certainly appeared to me that she was able to get to ground and the timeout signaled with time still remaining on the clock. I think so. I mean, I, I was watching very, very close. Well, saying the game clock did not start on time, and Austin will not have the opportunity for a final play here at the end of the half. And that will be halftime. So it wasn't when the quarterback slid that was the issue. It was that the game clock did not start on the correct time. Austin on top by two and half. A spot in the X Cup on the line. The Sound lead the Empire 24-22 in our semifinal number two. Halftime here in Seattle. Semi-final number two in the X League, and it is a good first half. Austin with a narrow lead as we take a live look in at the Atlanta locker room. Last time, but guess what? We're gonna stop it out of there. We are not going to allow them to believe that they are better than what they are because we have allowed it. We have allowed it. Right or wrong? You know the offense. Our calls work, we've had success, we've got our stops, we just have to follow the game plan. Dane Robinson's empire had a great start. The second quarter belonged to Austin. We will see who can take the third and a spot in the final. Halftime in Seattle, semi-final number two. Chicago awaiting the winner of this one take a live look in to the Austin Sound locker room with Coach O. Step inside of the A gap and leave the back one free. Okay, so that means I've got like a three man slide. I'm gonna pick up the first three because on the trip side, when you roll, you're gonna have them all in front of you. Just understand that the pressure is gonna come from the backside defensive end. Now, what can help her give her time is do not get foot to foot on me. Don't come to the foot, stay out, because it makes more distance for that defensive end to try to run her down from behind. Okay? Yeah. It's working. Okay? Punch back, keep fighting. That's all we gotta do. Okay? If you can give her time and we start opening up, we'll take some shots deep again, because I still think we can get it. 
Coach O has to be pleased with the second quarter. Can his team continue and bring the momentum into the second half? These two teams met in week four in Atlanta. The Empire came away with a 50 to 34 victory. They outscored Austin 26 to 16 in the second half and they would like nothing more than a repeat of that performance in half number two here tonight. So Hodgins with it. Atlanta starting things off. Hodgins flushed out and just throws this one into the turf again. That big tape job on the right ankle of the young quarterback. And she is not nearly as mobile as she was early. No, she isn't. She does a good job, though, because that rush is in there right away. Good job just getting rid of that ball and not taking the loss. And you can see she's jogging around pretty good. So they've done a good job keeping that ankle loose in the locker room. I'm sure they got down and they re-taped that, make that a little firmer for so she'll be able to tough it out for sure. Hodgins under center, the handoff to Ziegler. Ziegler up across midfield, cuts back inside where she is met. All the way to the 21 goes the veteran Lauren Ziegler. And you see this handoff to Ziegler, a little bit of an inside trap play right there. And she gets vertical pretty quick. And when the ball carrier is able to start running north and south without anyone making her slow down, you're always going to get a big game. Former Florida Gulf Coast softball player, maybe the best two-way player on this roster. And that is saying something. A handoff to the near side comes Ezel. Ezel still on her feet and brought down shy of the 10. That looked a lot like the same play headed the other direction this time to the left, except instead of bouncing inside, they're going to go outside because that's where the yardage is. Safety missing the tackle, giving the ball carrier another five yards. Eddie Lopez comes in to make the tackle. Big block from Julia Fazekai there. It'll be second and one from the 12. Two receivers to the top. Salazar in motion. Hodgins, little pitch underneath to a Fazekai. A Fazekai hit after a very short gain. Austin not letting the star running back, Julia Fazekai, find any space. This is an interesting little play. It's kind of a swirl around pitch, real quick, leading up in there, but good job. That is Whitney Palmer running that play down from behind. And how many times have we called her name this season? She's up close to 20 tackles already for the year. Palmer, who calls Huntsville, Alabama home, but commutes to Austin. It would be quicker for her to commute to Atlanta to play for the Empire, but elects to go west, and Austin is very happy that she does. Gives you an idea of the commitment of some of these players. First and goal from the nine. Ziegler in motion. Ziegler, the intended target, throws this one up. Ziegler batted around, no flag comes in, and a lot of contact from Ali Fan on Ziegler. Fan may have gotten away with one there. I think Ali Fan does nothing short of just flat pulling the arm down of Ziegler on this up in the end zone. We'll see if we can get a good look at it here on the replay. Watch her at the top. Watch that right there. I mean, that's just a straight run and pull, but. If the referee doesn't throw it, it is not an infraction. So here we go. Let's get another down in. Baines second and goal from the nine. Let's see if Atlanta goes back to the run. Yep, yep, right, right, right. They do. They have to account for number 71. First and foremost, Palmer, a terror. And this ball dropped on the turf. I believe Ziegler was able to get there. We'll see. Austin says they have it, do they? Trying to dig through the mass of bodies, and it's going to be Atlanta ball somehow. The Empire able to get there, and it was indeed Ziegler. They heads up play to fall on it. It was definitely between Ziegler and Palmer. There it is right there. Good job, Ziegler. Johnny on the spot grabbing that. I don't know how she gets it out of that pile right there. Got some strong hands there, Lauren Ziegler. Okay. Ziegler keeps the drive alive for the Empire. Third and goal from the eight. A huge series here. Handoff to Ezel. Ezel across the five and brought down at the two. It'll be fourth and goal from the two for Atlanta. 
and fourth and goal from the two, and also a almost a tackle for a loss by Whitney Palmer. Just can't quite get there. And here we go, a big fourth down right here. Can Chicago convert and take the lead, or will Austin continue to lead in this ball game by making a stop? Is the star two-way player. We've seen her two touchdowns on offense. Big pass breakup on defense. Hodgins underneath has her target. Touchdown, Lindsey Ezel and the Empire. So Atlanta marches down the field and retakes the lead. And really just kind of a sweep run, except it's just a quick pass. No one around, that ball's out there quick. Most importantly, that ball's thrown somewhere where Lindsey Ezell can catch it and immediately start going forward. That ball's on the money right there. Good pass for Bailey Hodgins. Great hands from the speed back, the rookie, the Georgia native. Empire going for two. Hand off to Ziegler around the side and she is met at the line of scrimmage. A wall there for Austin and who else but Whitney Palmer leading the way. I was gonna say there's a wall but I'm gonna tell you who the keystone is in that wall and that's 71, Whitney Palmer. She whips three blockers right there. And I am sorry Lauren Ziegler, you are not breaking through a tackle of Whitney Palmer. A four point lead for Atlanta after the Lindsey Ezel touchdown. Now we'll see how Austin is able to respond. This was a back and forth affair in the second quarter. Atlanta led seven to nothing at the end of the first. And Austin really seizing on the momentum to take the lead and they are gonna try to take it all back here. Intercepted, Julia Fazakai with the pick. Austin tried to take it all back in one play, and Afezik Kai says, not gonna happen. And Afezik Kai, appropriately enough, gets the crown, and I think that definitely deserves one for that play. And if you're gonna try to throw it over the top on Jolie Afezik Kai, you better make sure you take into account that she's six foot one, and you better get a lot of air under that ball in this case, Michelle Angel does not. Climbing the ladder, beautiful one hand grab, little sports center action right there. That's a top 10 play for sure. What a play, what a big play. Keeping momentum for Atlanta from Jolia Fazekai. Just about to say, that is a momentum killer. Austin tried to take it all back in one. Fazekai, the one handed pick. And here they come again, Ziegler on the ground. Ziegler dances, flag comes in late, and Ziegler across the 15, but we will have to check on the penalty. Decline first in 10 Atlanta after Austin's defensive line lining up offside. Okay, one on two, or right on two. Atlanta with it at the Austin 15, and this is a huge chance to really extend this lead. They can make it a two score advantage. Hand off to Salazar. Salazar. On her feet, inside the five, this one comes out, but after she was down, first in goal coming for the Empire from the three. And this is gonna be another offsides on the defense. You can see an Austin Sound player lining up late. Tried to get over towards the point of attack, didn't get there in time, and another good tough run by Salazar. And as quickly as momentum looked like it was with Austin at halftime, now it looks like momentum is firmly back on the side of the Atlanta Empire. Salazar, an absolute battering ram, listed at 5'7", 170 pounds. Rookie, 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 rookie. A pure Dang. football player in every sense, says Coach Robinson. Another flag. Prior to the 
Looked like the tight end, Jana Donaldson, maybe jumped off sides, but looks like she wasn't the only one. Something like that happens. Usually the center forgets the snap count and doesn't snap, and everybody else takes off. I think that's what we had right there, Kit. Coach Robinson pacing in the sideline. He understands the importance of this drive. The Empire going up by two scores. Another high snap. Hodgins able to get this one, and Hodgins again wisely throws it away. Had Salazar, but better to be safe than sorry in that kind of situation. Absolutely, and by my count, that's bad snap number three so far. The last bad snap was for a touchdown. I understand you get a bad snap every now and then because you got 71 Whitney Palmer across from you. But it doesn't matter what happens. If you don't get a snap, everything's going to go bad from there. If you start airmailing the quarterback on snaps, boy, it gets really bad at that point. You're going to have to get that tidied up. There have been some issues between the center, Weller, and the quarterback, Hod Hodgins. And we will see if they indeed can clean those up and in short order. Another, a fourth high snap. Ball on the ground. Hodgins can't locate it. Palmer with it. Palmer at the 10, the 5, touchdown, Austin. Whitney Palmer takes it in, and Austin retakes the lead. Whitney Palmer with it, and that is the second time we have seen that tonight. And back-to-back -back high snaps. And it looks like the ball, she just loses it right there. Does Bailey Hodgins, can't find it. And Palmer, she's all over it. And that is her second touchdown for the night. And right now, if I'm Coach Dane Robinson, I'm over there on the sideline, and we're going to get that snap figured out because that's two touchdowns. That's 14 points or more on the board because of bad snaps. And that's something, quite frankly, that just shouldn't be happening at this point in the year. Again, the Alabama native, Coach calls her a middle linebacker from hell, unstoppable. And you can certainly see why that is an apt description of number 71 in orange. Austin with the keeper, Angel in untouched. And the sound on top by four. Austin 32, Atlanta 28, 151 remaining in the third quarter, a spot into the X Cup on the line. And you wonder if this is a called play or not, or just a quarterback making a heads up play, realizing it's straight man to man from the Atlanta Empire. And Michelle Angel seeing the parting of the Red Sea in front of her and said, all right, I'll just walk in and take points from you right here. And I think that's what she did. We're seeing a lot of very heads up, very intelligent quarterback play here tonight. I'm very impressed with both Michelle Angel from Austin and Bailey Hodges from Atlanta. Before we went to break, massaging the calf muscle, so I do think it was, in fact, only a cramp. A minute 24 remaining in the third. Hodgins takes to the air over the head of Ziegler. Flag comes in late. That's going to be pass interference against Cassandra Bills, excuse me, rather, Anna Garza. You got different officials working different sidelines. You saw a no call on the part of Allie Fan that looked pretty much like a dead on pass interference. Pass interference. Austin, Austin number, number two. two. The foul is more than 10 yards downfield, down 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 therefore, it's a 10 yard down 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 and it looks like the official on this side of the field calling the game a little bit tighter. It was a little push. I can see that certainly getting called. So got to give the official his props. He did it correctly on that. Good call. First and 10 Atlanta in Austin territory. Pressure comes. Too low Salazar unable to scoop that one up. Oh, my goodness. That play might have gone the distance right there. Ball just a little bit underthrown to Salazar from Bailey Hodgins, of course. It's a free run straight up the middle. Hard to get anything forward momentum, any zip on a pass like that. Good play from Austin overall on that. Good pass rush, good pressure. Salazar has been the workhorse on the ground. When they have needed yards, they have handed it to number 39. Will they do so again in this situation? Here we go. 
Inside handoff, Ezel, or excuse me rather, that's gonna be coming through that number 21, Jada Donaldson with it. Austin says they came away with it and we will have to take another look. We've seen a few of these plays tonight. It looked like Donaldson was down. We will see what our officials have to say. Donaldson immediately looking up at the monitor. A huge turn, and indeed, it's going to be Austin Ball. So Atlanta inside the five-yard line, coughs it up. Austin has it, and what a momentum killer. Boy, turnovers have just absolutely devastated the Atlanta Empire tonight. The high snaps, and now this, a fumble. Looks like Atlanta was going in to possibly score, and now the ball and that potent Austin offense led by Michelle Angel back on the field. Atlanta with four high snaps. Two of them have resulted in Austin touchdowns. Angel in her own end zone. Pressure comes and wisely gets rid of it. It's a good job getting rid of that. Wondering if she might tuck it and run. Again, it was one of those defenses where Coach Dane Robinson decided to spy that quarterback. Two rushers on the outside and that linebacker just kind of sitting in that hole, reading the eyes of Michelle Angel. Three quarters in the books, 10 minutes remaining to see who will head to the X Cup to take on Chicago. A four point game as we head to the fourth quarter. 10 minutes remaining, a spot in the X Cup on the line and maybe a game decider here as this one came out before Jada Donaldson was down and that is a huge fumble forced by Austin. That's a great, great job by the camera crew. Clear as day, fumble all the way. Austin with a little flare pass outside and good up to the 13 yard line. Garza, great job, great job. Sandra Bills there blocking. Anna Garza with the reception. Good play right there, good flare. Pretty good tackle in open space, a little bit of a miss, but that's what you want to do on first down right there. Garza, the Monterrey, Mexico native, the first Mexican to play professionally here in women's tackle football in the U.S. Still lives in Monterey, makes the commute up for practice. Empty backfield for Angel. Receivers to each side. Angel, plenty of time. Too tall. Again, looking for Garza. And that ball's got to be there a little bit earlier by the time Michelle Angel delivers this pass. The defender's already caught up. It's got to be thrown right now because you just give that defender time to catch up. It's got to be in front and it's got to be earlier. Garza, not the tallest receiver, just five foot three. Which team will head to the X Cup to take on Chicago? Austin, they're hoping it's them. That will be played on their home field, the HEB Center. They're going to have to hustle to get this off. Are indeed able to do so in the nick of time. Angel complete, able to find her target and up across the 20. First down, Cassandra Bills. Cassandra Bills, she's been relatively quiet tonight for being the lead leaguer in yards and touchdowns. They've really done a good job keeping her in check. Let's see if they can do that for the rest of the game, but so far the defensive game plan for keeping her under control has worked out. Cash Money has not been able to make the impact she would hope. Austin with the running game up to midfield. Going with Garza that time. The diminutive wide receiver gets the carry and able to make something of it. And I think this is important for Austin to do. I think they need to do some sort of running game just to keep that Atlanta defense honest. You can't let them either cover all the time or blitz all the time. There has to be some sort of run threat in order to keep them at bay. They picked up 42 yards on the ground and that without their top running back, Rachel Washington, who went out in the first play with an ankle injury. Garza remains the running back, gets another handoff, bounces it outside. Garza with a nice step up to the 20 and is gonna be just shy of the first down. Hey, hey, Palmer, Palmer, leave it. Good job, leave it, good job, leave it. Stay composed, come here, come here. It looks come like here. they broke the chains on the sideline. Hey, nope, here. it's okay. It's a good play right here from Garza. Good little wiggle, good little cut. Stay composed. 
Pretty exciting athlete right there. Look at that jump cut right there. There's another juke right there. Get to the chains. Almost, it's gonna be close. It appears they are going to mark her just shy. After we'll have to play. wait for confirmation First on that. First foul, unnecessary roughness. Number 11 of Atlanta. That's a 10 yard penalty added to the end of the run. It will not Atlanta matter as Keon Harrison down. flagged for unnecessary roughness. Let's go. God damn. Run that. It's another unforced error on a part of Atlanta and a big one, 10 yards. That's a free first down right there. And you're already down four points. You certainly don't want Austin to score again. Only about seven minutes left in the ball game. Personal foul against Harrison makes it first and goal. Austin from the nine. On the ball, up, up, up. Golden opportunity for the Sunday, Sound Sunday. to extend their four-point hey, lead. Sunday, Sunday. Rip receivers to the top. Angel. Set. To me. Go! As a receiver in motion, fakes the handoff. Angel. And this one intercepted, or was it? It was indeed the Empire there. Angel just taking too much time and able to get there was Callie Stanley. Stanley, the rookie with the pick. Good job, here we go. And every time you think one team's gonna jump up and seize momentum, well, we just get surprised. This pass a little bit lackadaisical. Again, another ball off the back foot of Michelle Angel. She steps into that, she throws it with some zip. It's a touchdown because the receiver's wide open, but as it is, she doesn't quite step into it. It doesn't have the zip on it. And what a play from Callie Stanley right when Atlanta needed it. Lane, another pass thrown across Angel's body, across the field, and when that happened the first time, Salazar took it for a pick six. Was lucky Stanley didn't hear. Here comes Salazar on cue, up to the 14. And it's ground and pound and ground and pound from Atlanta. You know what they're gonna do. Austin knows what they're gonna do. The person in the fifth row in the stands, they know what they're gonna do, but they're that good at it. That is their identity, and they are going to continue to do it and work in a few pay action passes off of it. And on three interceptions tonight, the pick six from Salazar started them off. Hodgins drops back. And this is intercepted. Austin returns the favor and a great heads up play. The backer lateral. Austin still with it. And here come the sound into Empire territory where they will be down. There is a penalty flag on the field as Cassandra Bills comes up with the interception. Personal foul, roughing the passer, Austin number 71. That's a 10 yard penalty added to the original line of scrimmage and an automatic first down. Oh my goodness. Here we go, let's take a look. She's gonna get rid of the ball, and that's definitely a personal foul penalty. You just can't be doing that, not when there's a trick to the X cup on the line. What a silly, silly play from the Austin defense. You want them to be aggressive, but at the same time, everybody knows when that ball has left the quarterback's hand, you gotta stop. And they didn't, and that takes a turnover off the board. Good. Whitney Palmer has been tonight. That is a huge mistake from Austin's star middle linebacker. So Atlanta back on offense and in better field position. A new set of downs. Salazar lowers the boom. Salazar still. They're going to whistle her out of bounds. And Salazar the first down in then some. A statement game from number 39. Oh my goodness, look at this. Just a simple pass out to the flats. And here we go. Lower the boom and hop on the bus. She is running, she is gunning, she is do it all. Man, what an impressive player, Jessica Salazar. Look at the stats, 10 rushes, two receptions, 70 yards total, the pick six that got Atlanta started, an MVP caliber performance, and Austin's defense swarming, and that is exactly what you wanted to see, Christina Villalobos. The Lobo in for Austin. There you go right there, the leader of the Wolf Pack, getting a stop in the backfield, trying to slow down that Chicago freight train that is their running game. That's how you do it right there. A 
loss of two brings up second and 12 for Atlanta. Now under five minutes remaining in the ball game. Hodgins underneath goes to her safety valve, able to find Donaldson. Donaldson picks up two, gets it back to the original line of scrimmage. And I like this right here, going through the progressions. You're looking deep to middle to short. None of that's there. Let's take the safe outlet. Let's throw the short ball. Let's get as many yards as we can. Heady play right there from the young quarterback. Third down. Time ticking off. Will Atlanta have another opportunity, or do they have to score in this drive? Salazar in motion. Hodgins, little flick under to Afezakai. Afezakai tracked down from behind by who else but Whitney Palmer. A little bit of kind of a shovel pass look right here. Here it is right there. Watch, as soon as you get the snap, pop it right there to Afezakai, running up the field. Good block right there by number three, wide receiver running back, Lindsey Ezell. Could this be the play of the game? Hodgins scrambles. Hodgins drops back to throw, has a target complete. Touchdown, who else? Jessica Salazar. Kidder, are you sure she's 19 and a rookie? Because I'm not believing it. She sees the scramble, then she looks up. She has her wits about her to see Salazar open in the end zone. And, and she's a rookie, she looks like a 10-year vet. I mean, I'm just absolutely blown away by, by the poise and the skill of Bailey Hodgins. She's as good as they come. The handoff, and it is gonna be knocked short. Nina Francis unable to get across, so it stays a two-point game. Atlanta with the narrow lead, three minutes remaining. And a little bit short, and in all honesty, they weren't going to be able to do anything on any conversion that would negate an Austin touchdown if they were going to get it into the first place. So really, probably not that big a deal. But again, I go back to, to Bailey Hodgins on that previous play. Looks like she's going to take it with her feet. Eyes always downfield. Sees Salazar in the corner. Hits her for the touchdown. And, and here we go. We had a great finish to that first game in the playoff semifinal. And we're getting set up for another treat. Another fantastic finish to a ball game right here between Austin and Atlanta. In a IA flag football national champion, two year starting quarterback for Sequoia High School there in their varsity girls flag football program. She has the experience. But if this is her first year in tackle, you wouldn't know it. Angel, the veteran, able to find her target. A great completion, Garza into Atlanta territory. And Anna Garza has come on big here in the second half. She has, and this is Garza helping her quarterback right here, working back to the ball. Don't just run deep, come back to the ball. Give her your numbers, give her your target. Michelle Angel, she's going to put it right where it needs to be. And that is a good relationship between a quarterback and a wide receiver on display there. Hey, check left. All eyes on Angel. Austin. Set. Looking to take a bit of time off the clock in this drive as well as Angel scrambles, will tuck it and run across the 20 and slides down at the 14. And there is a penalty on the play. And that is Dulce Martinez, the anchor of the offensive line out of Saltillo, Mexico, down in obvious pain. Previous, yeah, previous spot. It's usually in the vicinity of Holden. Holden, Austin, number 44. Right you are, my friend. We'll take a timeout. Staff of training to Martinez. 2.09 remaining. Atlanta on top by two. See Martinez, star offensive lineman, down on the turf for Austin. Take a look at the previous play she was injured on. There she is up at the top of the screen. And you can see, I think what happens is her arm gets caught funny 
And then she's slung around and that violent rotation with her arm in an odd position is what's gonna do the damage on that play. Let's hope she's okay. Yeah, it looks initially the way she fell, that may have hyperextended the elbow. Hard to tell though. And Santillo, Mexico native being attended to and certainly will be checked out by the staff. 2-10 remaining in the final result of this one, very much hanging in the balance. Austin, first and 20 for the sound from their own 18-yard line. Little flip up to Bills. Bills into Atlanta territory all the way down to the 20. Great play call from Austin. Absolutely great play call and good job by Coach Rivera adjusting to life without Rachel Washington. Little toss up to the side to Bills and she gets good yardage. Gets a good deal of that 20 yards back off of that 10 yard penalty off the holding play. We've come to the two minute warning. Who will join Chicago in the X Cup? Atlanta and Austin both trying to make their spot in the championship. Chicago Blitz led by Sydney Lewis waiting to see who they will face in the X Cup. And Lane, you think they have a preference between Austin and Atlanta? Uh, I don't know if they have a preference or not. I'd kind of like to see Atlanta play Chicago again, kind of a rematch of that opener where Atlanta was playing the role of Kansas City. That might be fun for the fans to see. Now that game was in overtime. Ultimately, Chicago won it 40 to 34, the only game we've had go to overtime this season. Angel steps back complete, able to find her target. That is to Shea Winfrey, the new addition, the, the newest members of the sound as a flag comes in late. That may be a personal foul against Atlanta, the late hit on Angel. There it is, the automatic first down as well. And here it is, good play. Good job avoiding the rush right there. That was pretty close. Kind of a little bit maybe touchy on that personal foul, but regardless, great ball to new signee Tisha Winfrey out there, wide receiver getting her first action. Good job standing in, throwing a good ball, looking down the barrel of that gun. That cornerback coming hot off the corner, unblocked on the blitz, but that's what you expect from that veteran, Michelle Angel. First and goal from the four for Austin. Austin in the power set. Garza, the Go. running back. And they will hand it to Garza, bounces it outside, and she is hit in the backfield, met by Lauren Ziegler. Number seven, first to her, and that's gonna be a loss. And nothing doing on that play. Lauren Ziegler, she sees that from the word go. She's unblocked, tries to bounce it outside, does Garza, and that is how you play cornerback at the highest level. You can't be out there, look pretty, and cover the pass all the time. So here's what Sometimes we're you've got to go force it on the run, and that's exactly what she did. Ziggler, the future Hall of Famer, one of the top tackles. I need the line that makes sure that we're protecting the A gaps. We're going to go trips right, and we're going to run rope, okay? Run rope. Trips right and run rope. Listen to me, okay? You have to just step back. Don't go underneath the route because I need you to pull the corner down. You understand? On this side over here, I need you to go F high, climb, hit her, and go to the corner. Trips right, roll. Let's go. I got Huh? You got a cruise. Just step back. Quite clearly, Coach O setting up a pass play out of trips, talking about what he wants each one of those receivers to do. We'll see if they can execute it here. Ball on the seven after the loss. Angel scrambling, and Angel is going to be hit for a loss again. It's Ziegler there. Two huge plays in a row from number seven. And obviously, Coach Robinson, he had the answer. You look at the wide receiver out by the wall here for Austin. They stay put, trying to create a bunch of open space for a receiver to get into, but it is not there. And a great play, that's two in a row right there from Lauren Ziegler. Tackle for a loss two plays ago and a sack on that play right there. And it's third down, and Austin, they're running out of chances. 
They've lost five yards on the last two plays combined. It is now third and goal from the nine for the sound. And a whistle before the snap. See if Austin. And it is indeed, thought they may be trying to get the timeout. But instead, a delay of game, and Austin has gone the wrong direction three consecutive plays. Yep, they're only making it harder for themselves. And they need to get a play in, and they need to get ready to go. It's a long way. Ojo sending in the sign. Austin down to their final two plays. Clock continues to tick down. 14 seconds left. Austin needs to move quickly. Prior snap, timeout, Atlanta. And Atlanta taking their first timeout with 11 seconds remaining. So both teams with one timeout remaining, 11 seconds left in the ball game. Austin trailing by two. And Elaine in that first game between Chicago and Seattle, it was an absolute blockbuster. It went down to the wire. Ultimately, Chicago scored with no time remaining to give them that one point victory. And what do you expect? You know, you got the best four teams in the league playing in these semifinals. They're playing like teams that are all capable of winning a championship. They're playing like the good teams that there are. They're well coached. All have outstanding quarterback play. You've got two plays left here. If you're Austin, I think it's going to be up to Coach Robinson to decide what he's going to do. Is he going to try to max cover or is he going to try to max blitz? He's been successful with both. He's gotten burned against both. So we'll see how these last two plays play out. Austin, you would imagine two chances to get to the end zone at the 15. Angel, underneath, incomplete. On stops with six seconds remaining. In that case right there, Coach Robinson, he chose to max cover. Only rushing two, you'll see both defensive ends coming. You've got the linebacker spying, reading the eyes, trying to step under that inside route. That's a great play against someone who likes to run inside cutting routes, and Coach O certainly does. The linebacker just reads the eye of the quarterback and drips left or right, trying to step into that passing lane. Austin taking their final timeout. We're gonna go F high, and I want you to run a climb route, okay? Over here, I want you on the inside, okay? And I want you to run an out route along the goal line. That's all I want you to do. Hey, I want you to go vertical. Now, center, snap the ball, get a pop, and go to the corner on this side. So on the trick side, nobody crosses the field, you understand? So run your route to the middle of the field, climb to the middle, snap the ball, and go to the corner. Left corner. Chicago, well, they can dance. They're in the X Cup. Well, Austin or Atlanta be joining the Blitz right now. Chicago can just sit back. No pressure on their shoulders. Six seconds remaining. The ball game on the line. Fourth down. Angel steps up, throws. It is incomplete. Austin unable to come down with it, and Atlanta is headed to the X Cup to take on Chicago. We will have a rematch of our week one overtime thriller. Oh, that. Dane the Robinson and his yeah, offensive coordinator, to Dominique that. Robinson, Pop and go get embrace. That Thank you. Yes, sir. As Austin comes up short, Atlanta. A chance to play for the ultimate prize September the 10th in the Lone Star State. Here you go right here, last pass. Stepping up into the pocket, looking for anything into the back of the end zone, thrown into traffic. Great job once again from the Atlanta Empire on defense. Two games in the semifinals, both of them going down to the very last play. You can't ask for any more than that. What a playoff game. What an exciting league, and I can't wait for two weeks to see these teams square off in the X Cup. Well, that'll do it for us. Big thanks to our entire X League crew. For my partner, Lane Greg, I'm Kent McConaughey, wishing you good night from Seattle, Washington, as Chicago and Atlanta advance. The X Cup is set September the 10th in Texas.